Welcome to The Romantic Side of Suspense with Sarah Hemmerker. In each episode, she'll talk with your favorite romantic suspense authors. They will take you behind the scenes of the writing process, giving excerpts from their writing, and share stories about their writing life. Hello, and welcome to The Romantic Side of Suspense. I'm your host, Sarah Hammerker, and I'm so glad you joined me. This episode, you're going to hear about this month's new releases in Christian romantic suspense. I hope you will enjoy hearing from your favorite romantic suspense authors as they talk about the background of their latest books. And now I'm talking with Darlene Turner in her new book, Buried Grave Secrets. So welcome back to my show, Darlene. Thank you so much, Sarah. It's great to be here. So let's start with your heroine. And since we write romantic suspense, we get to talk about love, which I think is great. It's a great counterpart to (laughs) some of that suspense that we have in our books. So how does she feel about love at the start of this story? Oh, that's a good question. She is not happy. (laughs) She (laughs) feels betrayed. Yeah, she feels betrayed by men. She's had some things happen in the past um, that have left her... um, just frustrated and she's given up on love so that's kind of how the story starts with her feeling that 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 she doesn't want to be in any type of relationship with you know because she's given up on love so. um and we, i almost want to say cue enter the hero right <laughs> <laughs> yes because you know yeah. he appears in the first scene. <laughs> yeah, of course he does. Of course he does. So, um, kind of shake up her little love world. So, um, but he's not without his own flaws and, and challenges. So, what what is your hero's greatest fear in this story? His greatest fear is that um, total darkness. And you know, something happened as a child that where he was locked in a room. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's he's scared to be in total darkness, but he's going to have to face that fear in the end of the story to save Jordan, the heroine. So he's got to face it and find a way out of where he's locked into. I don't want to do any spoiler alerts there, but but yeah, not. so he has to find his way through the darkness, and he he comes back to Christ, and and so it's it's more than just darkness. It's his mm. spiritual walk as well. So, yes. Yeah, I love how we can, you know, put our heroes and heroines and characters in those situations where they can be released from more than just earthly fears. So, exactly. <laughs> that's, always, exactly. that's always wonderful. Um, but yeah. let's switch to your villain, um, because sometimes okay. villains need their, need their say in our books, right? You gotta have a, yes. can't have a suspense book without somebody doing the suspenseful that's part. Very true. Um, <laughs> Very true, very true. Just just a little reader a tip out there for all you readers and writers. Um, so, but but our villains also have. I think um, we try to craft them with more than just oh they're bad. So, what's the one redeeming quality about your villain in this particular book? My villain in this book has a, a strong love for his mother, his grandmother, and his wife and, and uncle. Um, so he will do anything to protect them and protect their name. So that's basically what he does, why he does, why he does what he does in throughout the book. Cause he's, he's protecting his, his quote territory of his family love. Cause there were some things that happened in within his family that made him who he is. So, right. yeah, I won't, re- I won't reveal anymore, yeah. but, but his, his, you know, his, his love is strong for the others. Yes. Yeah. So he's very yeah. protective. <laughs> yes, yeah, and that, and that can be a very admirable quality, except when, you know, you're killing people and <laughs> harming people yes. to do that protection. <laughs> That's you very don't really true. need to. Uh, yes, so exactly. Let's, um, let's talk about the story setting. Um, why, okay. why did you need to set Barry Grave Secrets in this particular setting? Okay, so this setting um, story takes place in the province of Newfoundland. I've never personally, Canada, by the way, <laughs> yep, I've never yep. personally been to Newfoundland, but I hear they call it the rock. Um, it's, I've heard it's beautiful. So they, and they also get a lot of like storms, like hurricanes and that type of thing. So I wanted to throw in a hurricane to ramp up the conflict because the team has to beat the clock sort of thing to, to race against the hurricane 
and take shelter um, because they're at a crime scene and they need to beat the rains and the wind to protect the evidence that's there. So I just, that was part of the reason why I wanted to put it on Newfoundland. Um, and also just because it's, it's a unique place. Um, like I said, I've never been there, but I've seen pictures and, and I've heard so many amazing stories uh, about Newfoundland. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I love how we can use the setting as almost another point of conflict, right, for our mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely, our character. yes. Yeah, that's always yes. fun. Um, well, for us, not, not for our characters, of course. <laughs> <laughs> that's very true. We're a little mean to them sometimes. We so, are. Um, we are. What was the hardest part of writing this particular story for you? Okay, so this book is about a forensic anthropologist. So the hardest thing I found was was making the timeline real for anthropology. So I was actually able to um, interview through Zoom a real-life forensic anthropologist who mm-hmm. happens to actually live on Newfoundland. <laughs> so it was kind of cool. Um, but because I wanted to make it, you know, because you know what it's like on like shows like Bones and that type yeah. of thing where, you know, they, they find the evidence and they figure it out like really quickly. So I wanted to find out exactly like how long it takes to do this and to do that. So to, to make it somewhat believable. Now we know it's fiction um, and right. we do have to, to speed up our timeline a little bit, uh, but that made it just a little bit trickier. So that was the hardest part, but, but it was also challenging at the same time. It was good for me to do that, <laughs> but yeah, no, right. so that, that's basically, yeah. 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 So it was and, very and interesting. I think, yeah, I bet. And I think that sometimes it is, it is important for us to, sometimes we have to slow it down a little bit to make it more believable yes. because yeah. Um, yeah. No, no one wants to read a book in real time for some of the slow, slow it down, stuff. but speed it, speed it up at the same time. Yeah, that can yeah, be a exactly. challenge. <laughs> Definitely a challenge. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for spending this time with me today, Darlene. And before we leave, why don't you leave our readers with the book's tagline? Okay, standing guard with threats on all sides. <laughs> yeah, da da da. All right. Well, thank you again. And uh, listeners and readers, you can uh, check out her book and you can see when it's out in the notes to this podcast. But thanks again for being on my show, Darlene. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And now we're talking with Terry Reed about her latest romantic suspense, Undercover Christmas Escape. So welcome back to my show, Terry. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. Um, so let's talk about your heroine first I mean, in this book okay. and how she feels about love at the start of Undercover Christmas Escape. All right. Well, she is a very guarded person and doesn't trust that people will stick around and love her for who she is. Oh, <clears throat> well, that that would be kind of difficult since we have, haha, the hero <laughs> coming in, <laughs> coming into yeah. play. Yeah. The romance and the romantic suspense. So um, what is holding him back from finding love? Well, he is emotionally detached and he's a fixer. He tries to fix others. Can, and instead of embracing who they are, so you can kind of see how that's going to be a little bit of conflict between these two. <laughs> yeah, just just a little bit, you know. And our as our yeah. listeners and readers know, it's we we like to play with our heroes and heroines and give them not a smooth trip to falling in love. That's that's part of the fun. That is correct. Um, as writers, <laughs> and hopefully for you as as readers and listeners. Um, so. With suspense, of course, we have villains. Um, what's a rede- one redeeming quality about your villain in Undercover Christmas Escape? Well, he takes care of those he deems worthy. If you're loyal to him, he'll be loyal to you. All right. <clears throat> yeah, that is a good quality to have, but not if you're using it to, you know, try to kill people. Not right. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's let's talk about the setting. Um, obviously, it sounds like it's set around Christmas time, but the actual place um, 
that you have your story study. Why did you choose that particular location? Okay, this story is set in Dallas, and I needed somewhere in Texas, and I wanted a place that had a really good, diverse um, area, so urban, suburban, rural, and some industrial. And I also needed a university to be close by. And so Dallas just fit right in. All right. Yeah, yeah. I love it when we can find places so we don't have to always make things up. <laughs> it's, right. it's nice to use real places. <laughs> real places. Yeah. Uh, so what, what was the genesis of this story for you? How did this story start for you? Well, this came out of a brainstorming session with a group of screenwriters that I um, belong to. And I really liked the idea of a hero and heroine going undercover at Christmas. And so I thought, let's do Santa and Mrs. Claus. Ah, <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love about that. And obviously yeah. there's some sort of escape that they're, that they're doing too. Well, that, this, this book is sounding like a really good read for Christmas, Terry. So, um, yeah, you're welcome. Well, we're going to wrap up our little time together with what is your book's tagline? An undercover mission has deadly consequences. Ooh, I like that. Well, thank you for sharing about <laughs> Undercover Christmas uh, Escape on my show today. Great. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it and hope you all enjoy the book. We're going to talk with Carrie Johnson next in about her new book, Christmas Forest Ambush. So welcome to my show, Carrie. Thanks. Thanks for having me. We're going to dive right in because we always have too short a time for these quick takes. Um, so let's talk about your heroine in Christmas Forest Ambush. You know, that's a hard one to say <laughs> really fast, um, uh, the title of the book. Um, anyway, how does she feel about love <laughs> at the start of your story? Uh, Lucy Taylor is my heroine, and she's a child of divorce, and then there was some abandonment in her youth between the ages of like 10 and 13. So um, because of this, she's very cautious and guarded. Um, she really, really wouldn't even consider love. You know, she, the situation they're in in the book, she's trying to keep uh, Boone safe, the young boy who's in her care. So she's not even, it's not in her mind. Um, so Noah Holt, who's my hero, he has his work cut out for him to try to prove he can take care of them and keep them alive, but also to show Lucy that he's a trustworthy guy and he won't abandon her like what she's dealt with in her childhood. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yeah. But your hero is not alone with something that he has to overcome. <laughs> so what is his greatest fear in this book? <laughs> um, Noah's greatest fear is being caught in tight spaces. Um, absolutely, he's claustrophobic. And he loves the outdoors, which is part of the reason he became a forest ranger. Um, in fact, one of his bucket list items, which was really interesting for research, is uh, he, he's hiking the Appalachian Trail, which is a 2,200-mile trail that stretches from Georgia to Maine. So I did a couple, I read a couple books about people who've hiked that, which is interesting, because they're just a specific breed of person who wants to do that and be out in the woods for days and days without seeing other people. But he's a little bit along those lines, but not quite that extreme. But he is definitely claustrophobic. He loves being outside. And there's a scene in Christmas Forest Ambush where he has to face down this claustrophobia and he has Boone within the little boy. And so he's trying to keep him safe and stay calm. And I, I loved writing the scene, but I hated it because I'm kind of claustrophobic as well. And it's my worst nightmare. So it really, mm, it was fun, but also difficult to write. So yes, yeah. yeah. Back, so. Right. Yeah. I love a little yeah. carthetic car for, for you, I'm yeah. sure, yeah. a little bit. Because yeah. you didn't actually have to be there. <laughs> Well, except exactly. in your imagination. Exactly. No, just in my head, thankfully. <laughs> yeah. So let's let's talk about your villain. Um, what's one redeeming quality your villain has? Yeah, this is a little bit of a tough one, but I would say if if this re if you can be called a redeeming quality, I would say are his intelligence and self awareness. Um, mm. The villain knows that he's bad, and he doesn't apologize for it. He knows what he's doing is not right. I guess. And this, like, emotional intelligence, I guess, allows him to read people well. And he knows, before the start of the book, he knows Noah wouldn't want to be part of the crime they're committing, um, he and some other people. 
So he, he and he actually kind of thinks he's done a good thing by giving Noah an out, so he wasn't caught mm. up in what they're doing. And we'll see right. how that plays out. But I would say he's he's got purpose to his badness. <laughs> he, he's intelligent. That's <laughs> yes, what I'm yeah. saying. So you've already alluded to this, Carrie, um, that it, this is, you know, by the very title of the book, this is set in a forest. So why did you pick this yes. particular story setting? Um, I grew up in the woods in Connecticut, so I love the woods. I'm in Florida, and it, there's woods around me, but it's not the same as, like, the woods up north. It's just, you know, there's too many spiders and all that down here. Not that there aren't up north. It's just different in Florida. But anyway, and we also, uh, we, my family and I have visited Sumter National Forest, which is in western South Carolina. Um, in my first book, Tunnel Creek Ambush, in this series, it revolves around the half-finished historic railroad tunnel. And then in this book, I just wanted to, like, set them in the forest kind of, um, it's near Christmas tr- time. It's like beginning of December, so it's it's cooler now that South Carolina. So you're not going to get Arctic temperatures like you would in Alaska. But um, I just wanted to pair them like an outdoorsman, which is Noah with uh, Lucy, who you'll find out in the story. She does not like the outdoors. She is not a big camper hiker. She doesn't like any of it. So they were opposites in many ways. Um, mm. And I just we visited there, and it's a beautiful setting. So I just have the memories of being there. Which yeah, helps. yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, outdoors at, at Christmas time, no matter what the weather can be, can be quite, quite right, nice. Right, it was real. But if, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Except for your hero and heroine who are having a little bit of a hard time. So, um, yeah. What's the yeah? What's the hardest? What was the hardest part of writing this book for you? Um, I would say it was getting to know Lucy. Um, for some reason, I. When I write, I understand and connect more with the male point of views, which maybe it's because I've always been a tomboy and I'm a boy mom, and I, I, I don't know if that's it, but I just could not get Lucy to kind of share who she was to me. Um, she's interesting because she's fairly outgoing. She's fairly chatty and outgoing, but she's very guarded because of what happened to her in her childhood. And that was that then came across in how I was, when I was trying to get to know her and drop her out, you know, as a mm-hmm. character, and it sounds so silly saying that, but you get that as an author, like you, they are your creation, but to draw them out and to like get them to show who they are can be hard sometimes. So it was quite a bit of work. It was challenging and, you know, rewarding getting to know her better and finding out, like, her hurts, her past hurts, and what kind of drives her. So. Ah, ah, good, yeah. good. Um, yeah. So we're going to wrap our time together, Carrie, with our last question, which is what's your book's tagline? Okay, so the tagline for Christmas Forest Ambush is a young witness targeted and danger in the wilderness. Oh, I love that. So be sure to pick up the copy of your the copy of this book, listeners and readers, and thank you for being on my show, Carrie. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to The Romantic Side of Suspense with Sarah Hammerker. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review. You can sign up to receive notifications of upcoming podcasts and listen to previous editions at sarahhammakerfiction.com.